All right, what's going on, guys? Today I want to start a new project, uh, a new series on this channel. I know I start like a million series and never finish. But this one I really want to do. And the reason why I want to start it today is because today is Lag Um I was in Mehron last night. Thank God it was amazing. It was good vibes. It was safe. It was happy. Um, it was just a good experience overall. And Rabbi Shimon and, you know, Mehron and... Uh, Rashbi are a very, very big part of the breast of world, and you know the big, you know overall in the in the uh, Hasidic world. And there's a sefer that I've you know read from before, and there's a person that I've mentioned many times on this channel. His name is Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Shmuel Horowitz. Sorry, and Rabbi Shmuel Horowitz Zichron Rocha was a very, very big breast of uh who was from Tzfat in the early 1900s, and he spent. Uh, many years, many weeks, many months in Meron over his life uh, before, you know, Meron was like a settled place like it is today. Uh, he was there by himself at certain times, just him and one other person, him and a few other people. And there's a safer, it's called Yimei Shmuel, which is his autobiography that he wrote down and it's got amazing information, amazing stories. And I read it all the time and it's not translated and I just decided that today is Lag Bomer, Rashbi, Lechavid Rashbi, Lechavid the uh, Kavad Rashmul Harowitz, who spent a lot of time at, at uh, Rashbi, we're going to start reading this safer. We're going to start translating it. It's three volumes. It's going to probably take a few years to finish it all off, but let's begin. So this is what the safer looks like. It's an old, uh, you know, it's an older version. I don't know. If they're, I think they're working on a new version, but right now this is the only version that's in print. Um, and yeah, so Parak Aleph. So Rav Shmuel Horowitz wrote this all down himself, so we're just going to like, you know, whatever, like he's starting to talk about how he was born and everything like that. So it says that on Maitzi Shabbos of Parsus B'Shalach, um, which is uh, Shabbos Shira on Tez Zayin Shvat, in the year Tav Reish Salmachay, which is the year 1904, I was born to my mother and father in the holy city of Tzvat. My father... Now he's going to go through some of his yichus, some of his background, some of his lineage. So he says, my father... He is the eleventh, uh, the eleventh generation, a ben achar ben, a son after son from the Shlach Hakadosh, whose name was Yeshaya Halevi Harowitz, and his father's name was also Yeshaya Halevi Harowitz. And uh, he said that his father is the sixth Yeshaya from the Shlach Hakadosh. I mean that there was eleven generations, ben achar ben, but not all of them were named Yeshaya. He says that he was the sixth Yeshaya from them, and he also comes. Part of his background is also from the fifth generation, from uh, Rav Aaron Hagadol of Karlin, who was a big student of the Magad of Mezrich. And my father's father, my grandfather, Rabbi Usher Yecheskel Halevi Horowitz, Zechar Tzadik Lavracha, his mother, whose name was Bela, she was a Kroivoso Yishal Tzemach Tzedek. She was a relative of the Tzemach Tzedek of Chabad, and she was the granddaughter, right? So, so she was the granddaughter of Rav Aaron Hagadol of Karlin. So that's how he comes from Rav Aaron Hagadol of of Karlin. And the Tzemach Tzedek made a shidduch for her with his student Rav Yishai Zechut Tzadik Lavracha. I guess that was okay who was the 11th generation from the Shlach, right? So that was one of the other Yishais that we mentioned before. He was already very old, but they had five children together, five sons, and afterwards he died. Afterwards, she came, this lady, Bela. That's what it is, Bela. She traveled with her five sons to Israel, to the Eretz HaKodesh, when they were very little, and they came to the city of Tzfat, and she called her five sons the Chamishe Chum She Torah, the five books of the Torah. And my other and my grandfather, I guess from we're gonna see how uh, he's from there. Hold on, I just got a message. Uh, and my and my other grandfather, Rav Shmuel Heller, who was also a huge tzaddik, who was who who was then the the Rav of Tzvas. He would come every single Friday night by her to say good Shabbos. Mm-hmm. 
וגם תכף השתדך איתה. And also then I think he made a shidduch with her because his daughter, his oldest daughter, who Rosh Hashanah would say, my aunt Sarah, married her son Yosef Moshe. And they were very important. So yeah, there's a lot of yichas going on over here. I'm not sure. I mean, like it's hard to keep track of everything. And my other grandfather, Rav, 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 Rav Asher Yechesla, I think that's from his father's side. His mother came from Shmuel Heller, and his father came from the Shla. Uh, so my grandfather, Rav Asher Yechesla, married his Zugasai, Maras Helka. So who's, where does he come from? Oh, so he was one of the sons. Of this lady who came to Eretz Yisrael from the town of he married Maris Helka from the Mishpachas of Yafe, who were from the Gedolei Chasidei Chabad, who was a Talmud of Baltanya. Vishichiyosi uh, Meretzadik Morenu Harav Rav Mordechai Yafe the Baal Halavushim, which I've read stories of before on the channel. So yeah, this is. There's a lot going on over here. I'm not sure how it's all connected, but yeah, again. Okay, now he says, My father wrote a sefer about this yichus. He wrote a sefer called Eden Tzion. And he wrote in this lashon. He says, I heard in my youth that this guy in Rav Mordechai Yafa, Zichron Racha, he wrote, ah, okay, this is that story. He called his sefer, B'Shemus Asar Levushim, B'Bnei Hanei Shehayolai. Ki Pam Echad, he was he he ended up in a place that was loitar. He ended up in a place that was impure. I guess he I forgot the whole story exactly how he ended up here. I'm sorry, I have a really really bad cold. And when he saw that he was in a great sakana gedayla, like uh, I guess he was in a place where there was women, and they were like sleep with these women, whatever. And he said, okay, he's ready to go. But first, he said he needs to go to the bathroom first. And he and he climbed out through a pipe, a sewer pipe. You can imagine what a sewer pipe looked like in the 1800s or whatever it was. So yeah, that's a pretty intense move to do that. And he, and he, and, and he pushed himself out all the way till he got out of the city. And he was, and he, and he, and he could have died there. Sorry. And he was, and and at this time he was, and he was wearing ten uh, pieces of. Ten layers of clothing, and all of them were dirty. That's why he called it Asar Levushim. And he made a, and he and he made a nether there. He made a promise that if Hashem saves him, he will write ten svar b'shemus Asar Levushim. And he also davened that on his on, on, on his children on the on the generations that would come, so that they wouldn't come to any son with women, so that they wouldn't look good, that they wouldn't be handsome people. And I believe it's a bender, who we mentioned before on this channel as well, another big breast of Rechaz who lived in Uman. He said that when he was in the yeshiva of Makava in Poland, in Poland, he he saw a bacher echad b'shem Rav Yitzchak Atzvecker, Atzvecker, um, who actually was mekarev many bacher in this yeshiva to Rabbi Nachman, and when and when. And when the and when the first world war broke out, his father, the father of this guy, Rabbi Yitzchak, came to the yeshiva to take him home. And Rabbi Yitzchak Bender saw that this guy, Rabbi Yitzchak, was a very, very handsome person. He was a very good-looking person, and his father was mamish the opposite. He was very, very ugly. And he and he asked him. Uh, Rabbi Yitzchak asked Rabbi Yitzchak, "How could this be?" And he says. That my father is the door is the, is the fifteenth generation of the Baal Halavushim. That he said that the Baal Halavushim that asked from Hashem that fifteen generations from his children should not be pretty, should not be handsome, but he's the sixteenth generation, so now he's handsome. Well. Okay, so now that has to do with the Baal Levushim. But anyway, so my Zikini, Rab Asher Yecheskel, 
who's from this lady, Bela, I guess, whatever. But how is she from the body of Shavit Horowitz? I don't understand. Ah, because she, okay, fine. Fine, so now my grandfather, Rav, 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 Rav Asher Yucheskel, when he was a kid, he lived in Tzvas, and he was from the uh, upper level of Chabad Hasidim, um, and he was a very, very serious Ebed Hashem, and he had, and he was like one of these, like, I guess like a, uh, what we call an extremist kind of, like a little bit of a kanoi. And when he saw a person in Michal Shabbos or do a different, or do a different Avera, even from the, even from the, even from the rich people, you know, who could bother him if he calls them out, he wouldn't, uh, he wouldn't stop himself from giving them re, uh, re, rebuke. And he, even like, even if he would embarrass them. And he was not able to handle a shlo, uh, shlo, uh, shlomazelnik, a lazy person. And all the time, Rav, uh, Rav Shmuel Harwood says that that he would always tell me to go with clean clothing. Anyway, so he gave birth, you know, he was the father of my father, Rav Yishai Levi Harwood. Great. Sorry about my nose again. We're gonna learn one parak a day. I guess we'll learn one parak a day. And then, like we'll make a lot of videos, like, we'll make thousands and thousands of videos. But whatever. Okay, we're almost getting too close to parak base over here. My father, from the time that he was born, he was a very very big tzaddik. Um, he didn't do anything bad to his mother and father. He was a great kid. He was always well behaved. He was a he was a quiet kid. Um, he didn't he didn't really cry. They would just he would just sit there and just chill. And he says that his mother would actually have to like you know make sure that he ate a lot because he didn't like he didn't like come over to like eat like a regular baby would. Uh, and he grew up really without a father because my grandfather Rav 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 Rav, Rav, Rav Asher Yecheskel, he left Eretz Yisrael actually to be a shliach of Chabad somewhere. Uh, so now I'm going to tell over, Rav, uh, Rav Shmuel Harwood says, now I'm going to tell over a nace that I heard that was done for my grandfather, Rav Asher Yecheskel. Bechutzlar, it's Bebedinas Russia. Russia, he went to Russia, I guess. He was, uh, he went from a big city on a train that had many uh, uh, wagons on it. And he was sitting on one of the first wagons of the train. And a person came and said, "Get out of here, go to the other one." So, so my, so he says that my grandfather went from, uh, went to a, a different wagon in the train, a different carriage, a different whatever. And then that guy came again, and he told him to go again, and he went all the way, all the way, all the way. This happened many times, until he went to the last, last, last carriage of the train, last wagon, whatever it is. Why am I calling it a wagon? I don't even know what I'm saying. Uh. What's it called? So he was in the last car, like the last train car. What am I saying over here? And when the train, and then, and then afterwards, after that happened, after he was in the last car of the train, the train that he was in actually hit another train head on. This was a mistake that they were not supposed to be on those tracks. And all of the first, all the first cars, everybody, the first like 10 cars of the train, everybody was, Everybody got was killed, obviously. And my grandfather, who was in the last car, was not killed. He just fell out from this car when it crashed or whatever. And he was saved from a Misa Mishuna, a disgusting death. And who, and, and Rashul Harwood says, who knows who this person was who kept on pushing him away from each car. And then he says, my grandfather, Rav, Ravi, Rabbi Asher Yecheskel, he also built... The base medrash of Chabad and Tzvas. I think that's a Masechet Shul that still exists today, off the Kikar. Um, and my father learned that Dab in there, and they would stay up all night and learn Torah all the time. Da, 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 da. 
And he says that besides my father learning a lot of Torah, he also learned a lot of Musar. He learned the whole Rishas Chachma, the Chavis Alavavah, it's been for Ashlag Kodesh. He knew these all by heart. And in between Min Chamarev, they would learn Mishnayis, and they would learn about Peh. And uh, he says that here he knew, and from here he knew all, he knew five Sidre Mishnayis about Peh. There's six, but he knew five Sidre Mishnayis about Peh, which is pretty amazing. And afterwards, when he was when he was older, and when he was in Chutzarts, which we'll talk about later on, he was also he was also Zaychet to learn Seder uh, Seder Seder Taharis Baal Peh, which is very hard. I'm learning some stuff in Seder Taharis now. Oil is extremely hard. Um, and when and when and now he goes back. So Rashul Horowitz goes back and forth. Like that's how we're going to have to learn this. We have to keep him going back and forth. And he says, and now when well, we mentioned before that his grandfather left Eretz to go to Russia to do Shlichos. So now when he came back to his house, uh, he what's it called? He he found his father a klishale. He found Rashul Horowitz's father already, knowing a lot of shas and poiskim and everything like that. But from Hasidus, he didn't know. And, and, and even though his grandfather was like one of the Chabas groups, but I guess it was different back then. So he's told him to start, you know, learning to, you know, Hasidus Chabad. And he also became very great at Hasidus. And he also knew the Sefer Atanya Baal And he also uh, wrote a parish on Tanya, but it's just handwritten. It's Ksav Yad, it was never really printed. Uh... Yeah, so that's Parak Aleph. And that's what we're going to do for today because my nose is messed up and I can't breathe. But let's uh, let's hope that we'll do one video a week or something like that. It's pretty cool.